Good morning and welcome to our service of matins today, which comes from Hawkesbury. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter, sorry, fifth Sunday after Easter, and both readings are from St John. The first is from his first letter, and the second is from his Gospel. And the theme of the readings are remaining in his love. I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moves us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice, unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus, you our Lord. And grant him, most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins, he pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We now come to the Venite, and I would just like to um, say uh, how grateful I am to the choir here at Hawkesbury um, and to their director, Ben Humphreys, who is also our videographer for uh, producing this service, but also to the choir and to Ben for their lovely music and singing. Thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him. 
first lesson is taken from the first letter of John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, For whatever is born in God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one that came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Here endeth the first lesson. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvellous things. With his own right hand and with his own holy arm he hath gotten himself the victory. The Lord declared his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and truth toward the house of Israel, and all the ends of the world have seen the salvation of our God. Show yourselves joyful unto the Lord, all ye lands. Sing, rejoice, and give thanks. Praise the Lord upon the harp. Sing to the harp with a song of thanksgiving. With trumpets also and shawms, O show yourselves joyful before the Lord the King. Let the sea make a noise, and all that therein is, the round world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands, and let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he has come to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world, and the people with equity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, 
just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Here endeth the second lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. O Lord, from whom all good things do come, 
Grant us, thy humble servants, that by thy holy inspiration we may think those things that be good, and by thy merciful guiding may perform the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hath safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way, and you her plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant her in health and wealth long to live, strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies, and finally after this life she may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Charles, Prince of Wales, Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, William, Duke of Cambridge, and Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, and all the royal family. Endue them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our prayers today, we continue to remember the people of India at this terrible time of suffering. We pray for the Anglican Church of Kenya today and for Westbury on Air 7 Church of England School. We pray for Rachel and Robert, our bishops. We pray for the sick and the bereaved Pray remembering Linda, Terry, David, Olive, Stephanie and Andy. We pray for Mary and James in their loss. And in our list of the departed, we remember particularly Gordon, Hilda, and Nancy, and any others known to us who need our prayers or who we remember at this time of year. May the souls of the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.
Remain in my love. If you keep my, my commandments, you will abide in my love. When I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week we considered the vine and whether we wanted to be part of the Christian vine. There are many forms of spiritual sustenance around, plenty to choose from, from traditional religions to spiritualities that are rooted in the great religious paths. The bookshelves are full of updated versions of these paths, as are newspapers, magazines and so forth, from meditation to nature-loving, tree-hugging to wild swimming. I sometimes think that just as I enjoy following nature programmes and seeing Ben Fogels visit people who live on the edge of civilization, others probably look at the church and wonder, what if? Could I see myself finding God by wild swimming, or living up a tree, or on the side of a mountain, perhaps if I were younger. And I suppose when I was younger, I did venture to such places. But at my age and stage, I prefer a gentler path, which involves a bit of meditation and walking in the well-trodden paths of the Christian saints. And living on the side of mountains or in remote places has quite a Christian tradition. Yet the saints never let go of the basics of their faith. Scripture and Holy Communion were a given. Perhaps other people may enjoy coming to church for a wedding or listening to church music or even appreciate a service or a royal ceremony, but themselves find God in a different way. And who knows, perhaps their approach to Scripture and Holy Communion needs to be a bit different too. Let's face it, we are all very different, and what is right for me may not necessarily be right for you. And thankfully God is not limited to any particular way of doing religion. But the key thing here is that when we read Jesus saying, abide in my love, and if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, and this is my commandment that you love one another, there can be no clearer meaning that this is what Jesus means. We are here to care for one another, and if all else fails, that is what Christianity means. It's a matter of the heart and following Jesus' commandments. We can sit on a mountain or hug a tree. It really doesn't matter very much, so long as we are abiding in his love and living it out. And that 
broadens our field of vision considerably, doesn't it? Into where the kingdom of God is and where it isn't. Richard Holloway, the erstwhile Bishop of Edinburgh, asks, if believing in God is to hold in our minds the conviction that there is a superhuman being to whom we give the name of God, it is still legitimate to ask, so what? What difference does it make? After all, according to the letter of James, even the devils believe and quake. So it is entirely appropriate to ask this other question of belief. What's the point? What difference does it make? Well, does our faith help or hinder us to care for others? Does it bring us closer to people or take us further away? Does it deepen our relationships or cheapen them? Does what we believe make a difference to who we are and how we are with others? If it does, then perhaps we are abiding in Christ. Christ will be there in all that we are doing, wherever it is. His commandments are at heart that we must love God and love one another. He also told the disciples to remember him in sharing bread and wine, the sacrament of Holy Communion, as well as telling us to listen to his words, which are written in Holy Scripture, and not just listen to them, but understand them. There is therefore both a flexibility in how we nurture our spirituality but also a command to do certain very specific things. So I hope that your faith is both wide and open, but also specifically Christian, and that whatever you do in private helps you in your faith to become a better person. Amen.
So let us pray for God's blessing on us, on our families, for our friends and all for whom we have prayed today. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen.